Clean glasses. Wow. My glasses are messed up. Sheesh. What happened to my glasses? Why, why can't I have clean glasses? All right. Here's what we got today. I have been helping this guy try to get his quadcopter set up. And there comes a point where you go, just send it to me. Just put it all in a box. Send it to me. I feel a little bit bad because sometimes people say, hey, can I just send this to you? And will you just set it up for me? And obviously too many people ask that question for me to, I just couldn't possibly do it for everyone. But sometimes you just go, oh, just just send it to me. I'll, I'll do it for you. And usually, I got to tell you guys, usually the reason I do that is because I am freaking mystified. I have gone through all the steps that I can think of to get it working and it's not working. And I'm like, well, now I just want to know. And I say to myself, if I, if I was there, I guarantee you, I would have it working in like 10 minutes. So just send it to me. Today, we're going to put that to the test. <laughs> this is not a tutorial. I have been sent some gear. It's a jumper and it's a GEP RC rocket, I think it is. And like, we cannot get it to bind and we cannot get the receiver to work. And I'm just going to start from scratch and I'm going to set it up and we're going to see if I, it's going to be more than 10 minutes, but let's just see how quickly I can get this working. Or if I get stumped, I'm Joshua Bardwell and maybe you'll learn something today or maybe it'll all just be a blur. <laughs> So here's the first thing I'm going to do with the power off and the radio. I'm going to plug in USB. That's going to put the radio into bootloader mode. This is how I like to flash these radios. You can flash them by putting firmware on the SD card. There are various other ways you can do it. This is the way I like to do it because it works regardless of whether the SD card is working. It just, it, the downside is that your driver, there are sometimes some driver shenanigans, um, but I know how to I know how to deal with those. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run the Impulse RC Driver Fixer app, and I always do that when I have a new DFU device. And it, just to confirm that the drivers are working right, it says installing DFU driver. Uh, that means drivers fixed. Okay, that means we will now be able to flash this guy in bootloader mode. Next, OpenTX Companion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and make a new radio profile. Mm. I'm going to make a new radio profile. This is my Jumper T16. There may be things about this Jumper T16 that are different from mine. So I'm going to make a new radio profile. Profile new radio. I'm going to go settings, settings. The radio type is Jumper T16. And we're going to choose the standard options. No heli, because we don't fly helicopters. I don't. Alua. Internal multi, we do need internal multi because it says an internal multi protocol. Does it? Or does it have a, yeah, it's got the internal module. So good. Nothing else really we need to, default channel order, I don't care. We nothing else, we uh, temp T16, we'll name it. All right, I think we're fine. We're fine. So then file, download. Let's just download, check for updates. No updates available. Latest download 237. And I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to hit write firmware to radio. T16237. This is the one we want. T16 internal multi Lua no heli 237. OK. Write to TX. That went too quickly. It went quicker than I expected to. I'm, I'm a little suspicious. Okay. Oh, there we go. So when you flash it by plugging in USB with the power off, one of the advantages is that it updates both the bootloader and the firmware on the radio at the same time. When you flash it by putting the firmware on the SD card, you update the firmware, but not the bootloader. Usually that doesn't matter, but I like the fact that it flashes them both at the same time. And a lot of times talking people through downloading the firmware, put the firmware on the SD card, hold the trim switches in, turn the radio on, then flash it. There's so many steps to go wrong there. With this method, there's only one step to go wrong, and that is your drivers. Have, you have to have installed the drivers, but they're the same drivers that Betaflight uses, so 
presumably you should be okay. Anyway, this is the way I like to do it. 97, 98, 99. 100% and then it says warning file has no DFU suffix. Don't freak out. That's normal. It always does that. Okay, fine. Good. Next thing I want to do. So I've flashed 237 to the radio. Uh, the next thing I want to do is update the SD card. That's going to be slow as hell if I do it over the USB plug. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to get the SD card out. This is the SD card that came with the radio. I get rid of these as soon as I can. Just get a 16 gig or just get like pay five bucks for one. We're going to keep using this, but oftentimes these are flaky and just cheap and terrible and cause problems. In fact, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to just give this guy, I'm going to just throw that one out and I'm going to give him a, do I really only have 32 gigs? Fine. Because who knows if that's causing problems for him. It will cause problems someday. That's for damn sure. 30, 32 gig card is the max you can use. If it's larger than 32 gig, the radio won't read it. Just for kicks, I'm going to show you. I'm going to right click, format. I'm going to format this not as XFAT, as FAT only. Format as FAT. I don't think it can read XFAT. And start, format, OK. Format complete, OK. Next thing we're going to do is file, download, download SD contents. That's going to pull up this window. SD contents we want are. Well, it's going to be either 2.5 or 2.6. I don't know which. When you turn on the radio and it says SD card warning, it'll give you the version that it wants. I'm going to guess that it wants 2.6 since that's the newest and we're on the newest. And So we'll download version 0.2.6. All right, so here's the zip file that I downloaded from the internet. Here's my SD card. Just going to grab all this stuff and drag it over there. This is why I take the card out of the radio and use an SD card reader on my computer because... This takes so long if you use the USB interface on the radio. It takes forever. You can do it, but it takes forever. Okay, we'll reinstall the SD card now. We're gonna turn the radio on. When we turn it on, we do not want to see an SD card warning or anything like that. Bad radio data, press any key. That sucks, but okay. It's Bad radio data might, there, there are a number of things it could mean. Usually it means that this was on Jumper TX and now we flashed it to Open TX. And the first time you do that, you'll get a bad radio data and it's going to wipe your radio clean. Um, the good news is that the radio has now been wiped clean. <laughs> and the first thing it's going to ask us to do is calibrate the sticks. That's good. We should do that anyway. Um, if you just get your radio, you should always calibrate your sticks. Uh, you can access this menu by pressing the sys key and then page to the calibration screen. When you do this, there's a, a good tip. Move your sticks all the way up and all the way down. Oh, press enter to start. My bad. Make sure that you also center the side sliders. You can feel a little detent. It's very weak detent, to be honest with you. I guess we should center. This is actually, this six position is actually treated kind of like a potentiometer, so we need to calibrate it as well. Everything is centered. And we'll press enter. Then we'll move them. Okay, great. Now when we move them, do not, you see I'm using just my fingertip, and I'm very gently touching the edge of the travel. Do not press hard. However hard you press when you calibrate, that is how hard you need to press in real life, and you won't be pressing that hard. Press gently, press gently, and do not touch it hard. Don't forget to also move the sliders on either side and the knobs on the top front. All right, and you have to do the six position. So it'll just go one, two, three, four, five, six, and now we should see down here, you can barely see that. Sorry, guys, but like I said, we're going fast. Five, four, three, two, one. Now everything is calibrated. Press enter. Okay, perfect. Now we have a fresh, clean radio. Let's try turning it off and on one more time and make sure we do not get an SD card version warning. Why are we getting a throttle warning? The throttle is idle. One reason we get a throttle warning sometimes is you pushed too hard when you calibrated, but that's not what's happening here. The radio is in mode one, so it actually thinks this stick is the throttle. It's confused. Yeah, we will, we'll, we'll fix that in just a second. So the next thing is whenever you flash one of these radios, I don't know why, but it switches to mode one and it thinks the throttle is on the right stick. Here's how you fix that. You long press the sys key. Oh, it switches to the tools menu. Well, that's very clever. And didn't used to go to the tools menu first. That's very clever, but okay. 
where's the page key page page radio setup that's where we want to be radio so oh, let's see it's done it again oh well radio setup we're going to scroll we're going to scroll up and that'll take us to the bottom of the see scroll i said i was going to go fast and not do a tutorial but there you go we're going to go all the way to the bottom of the menu and we're going to change the mode from mode one to mode two and that puts the throttle where it should be and we are good long press the model key and we'll do the initial model setup we want to turn on extended limits so we can adjust the endpoints check swish positions I'm gonna put all the switches the switch is broken okay I'm gonna put all the switches in the up position except for the arming switch which I'm gonna put in the pulled forwards position this is my disarm position and then I'm gonna highlight switch positions and I'm gonna long press and it's gonna record that as the default switch positions done internal RF uh, I don't even know what kind of receiver we've got on here but okay I think it's uh, we'll see we'll see in a minute and then page inputs RETA all good okay the receiver that we're using is the Flysky FSA8S. Um, that's a Flysky receiver. So in order to bind to that, we're going to go into the model setup. We're going to go down to the internal RF. We're going to set the mode to... You would think that mode Flysky is correct, but it isn't. Oh. It wants us to update the multi-protocol module firmware too. Yeah, we'll get that in a second. So you would think that FlySky was correct, but it isn't. What you want is uh, what you want is FSky 2A. That is a common point of confusion, and we're going to have it set to PWM iBus. We can change it to output SBus, but I think we want iBus. I'm not sure how this receiver is wired up. That's how we're going to set it for now, though. So part of the confusion here is that this receiver is connected to a plug. I'm not going to, and I don't want to like pull this whole thing apart to see what the flight controller, how it's set up um, and where that plug goes. I am going to just take one minute and see if I can search for a manual. No DSM receiver. The instructions for spectrum receivers will almost always also work for FlySky receivers. So don't worry about that. Um, but it looks like it looks like it's UART six in every case. Oh, here's a FlySky receiver too. Yeah, UART six. Okay, great. So that's what we need to know. We're gonna use my handy dandy little smoke stopper here because it's got an on-off switch, which will make it easier to bind. Yeah, I can feel myself pressing it down. So. The red light is fast blinking. I assume that means we're binding. Now we're going to go to the radio and we're going to choose bind. You can't, you probably can't see that. And the red light goes solid or slow blinking. And basically I just want to see any change at all that indicates that's like something, I don't know. I can't memorize the blink pattern for every receiver. So now we're going to power cycle it. And we have solid red light. Presumably that means we're bound, but I'm going to test that just by turning off power to the radio. And the light starts blinking. Okay, great. Okay, so the receiver is bound. The next thing to do is to go into beta flight. And uh, we have to plug in USB. So the receiver is at 885 on the throttle channel. That indicates in beta flight, that's, that means it's in fail safe. Okay, so let's check the ports tab. Beta flight 357. Okay. Is this a pre configure? Have they like. Let's diff this. Have they made any changes? No. This is all completely stock. Except for this, the changes we've made. Maybe it's been flashed. Since it's all completely stock anyway, and if there was any like GEPRC custom configuration, it's been lost. Let's just go ahead and put it in bootloader mode. Uh, and flash it. Stop the beeping. What's wrong with you? Omnibus F4 SD is the target. All right, so we'll go firmware flasher. No, don't show unstable releases. We don't want to put an unstable release on this guy's quad. 
target is Omnibus F4 F7, uh, Omnibus F4 SD, Omnibus F4 SD. Um, we'll pick the non-legacy version. Always flash the non-legacy version first. And then the legacy version second, if there is like a UR not working or the OSD not working or some bug, but always flash the non-legacy version first. The latest release is 416. Okay, fine. Load firmware. Flash firmware. While we're doing that, I've noticed the radio is saying failsafe not set. It's warning us that failsafe's not set. Some uh, receivers have the failsafe set uh, on the radio. And if that's the case, the radio will warn you if you haven't set failsafe. I'm going to set failsafe by holding down the, um, the model key. And then I'm going to scroll down to internal module. And there should be a failsafe setting here, I suppose. Failsafe mode. There we go. We always want failsafe set to no pulses. Uh, failsafe is what happens when the receiver loses connection with the controller. No pulses means it shuts down and that lets the flight controller decide what to do next. Okay, we have flashed. We're going to connect. We have to hit apply custom defaults whenever we flash Betaflight 4.1. No problem. And we're going to go to the ports tab. UART 6 has serial RX enabled. That is what we need. Configuration tab. The receiver type is going to be IBUS. That's a FlySky receiver. Save and reboot. Oh, sorry. My bad. And receiver tab. No, we still do not have any movement in the receiver tab because the receiver is not powered up because I turned the battery off. Receiver is now powered up. Receiver is bound. Still no movement in the receiver tab. Wiring to the plug is correct. It is correct. That's RX6. Is there anything else you have to do? I really, I really think the receiver should be working here. Um, let's try a few different things. First thing let's try is I said, well, if there's any bug in the, if there's any bug in the target, then flash the legacy mode. Let's just, I mean, this shouldn't matter because we also had the same problem on 357, but there was, so let's, there was no legacy mode in 357, but let's try flashing legacy. Omnibus F4 SD is the correct target, but we're going to change from Air B to legacy. Huh. They stopped making the legacy at 411. Interesting. Well, that's fine. We can even go back to 357. I don't know. Let's, we should go back to 357. As long as we can't have the latest and greatest. I don't think there's a bug. Let's go back to 357. Just see. Here we are on 357. We'll check the ports tab again. Serial RX on UART 6 is enabled. Save and reboot. Ports tab, just verify that that's still true. It is. Configuration tab, serial receiver, IBUS receiver type, save and reboot. Receiver tab, no. Okay, so now we're in weirdo land. Like, why isn't it working? Here's the next thing I'm going to do. We're going to go and we're going to try each of the serial ports one by one. Maybe the serial port is wrong somehow. We'll go receiver tab, no. Ports tab, you are at one. I, it, it should be you are at six. It's on the omnibus target. It's almost always you are at six, if not always. Ports tab. You are at one. Receiver tab. Still not working. Okay, so we'll go back to you are at six. Here's the next thing we're gonna try. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna change it from I bus to S bus, and let's see if it stays bound after I've made that change. Do I need to rebind it? Uh, it appears to still be bound. I don't think you need to rebind it in order to make this change take effect. So uh, maybe uh, maybe ought to be a good idea to rebind it just, just to be sure. So now we have set the FlySky receiver to SBUS mode. FlySky receivers can output both. Most of them, if not all of them, can output both SBUS and IBUS. And you just change the mode in the controller. It's kind of convenient. Normally you want to use IBUS because SBUS has inversion and SBUS is complicated. But in this case, IBUS isn't working. So... Let's go to the configuration tab. We'll change it from IBUS to SBUS and we will save and reboot. Boom. It's working. I have no idea why it wasn't working on IBUS. It should have worked. I don't know why it wasn't working, but now it's working and I don't care. <laughs> okay. 
that was the thing. That was the problem that we needed to solve. From here, setting up, setting it up is just like setting up any other radio, which I have a zillion tutorials for. So, so I'm going to leave you here. If you would like to follow along with the steps that I will now take to finish getting this guy's quadcopter ready to fly, I suggest you check out my $120 F, uh, quadcopter build where I take you through all the steps of building a Tyro 119 quadcopter. Um, literally every solder joint, every step in beta flight, and I just go deep, deep, deep into it. And um, channel centers are at 1520. That's weird. I think this is a spectrum receiver. Why are the channel centers at 1520? That's normally only for spectrum receivers. That's pretty weird, but I know how to fix it. Don't worry. Okay. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Link to that playlist down in the video description if you want to check it out and you want to follow along. I uh, hope that this troubleshooting was interesting to you. I think I, I've now I'm stopping the video now because of, that was the most interesting part. Oh, who am I kidding? You guys want to see me finish it. I'm going to I'm going to record the finishing it. It's not any faster. Let's finish it. Let's finish the setup. Oh, warning. Let's... Hey, what? What? Hey, what are we doing? Why'd we turn off? His flipping power switch is broken. This radio has seen some abuse. See, look, it's stuck. It's stuck. Ooh, that's not good. The freaking... This radio has seen some abuse. I think this radio has been dropped. This power switch is sticking. No, don't turn off. Power... Oh. Failsafe not set. Shut up. I did two set the failsafe. What are you talking about? Failsafe mode not set. I know I set that. That ain't right. No pulses. All right, let's see if that gets forgotten or something. After getting the receiver working, the very next thing I would usually do is set up the aux modes. And in order to do that, we'll long press the model setup and then we will page to the mixer screen. And I'm going to add a couple mixes. If I just click the button and then scroll down to source and then just flick the switch, it automatically assigns that switch to that channel. That's all I need to do. So I'm going to assign a couple switches. My standard setup is arm here on the back shoulder, um, buzzer here on the momentary, and then angle mode, turtle mode on the front. That's how I'm going to set this up for him. So I've got three switches set to three channels. No problem. Well, the next thing I really would do is I would, I would fix the endpoints in the centers. I forgot that I had to do that. Let's finish setting up the flight modes, and then we'll come back and we'll fix the endpoints. So you can see that now... Okay, if I move these switches, aux is one, three, and two are moving. Great, I've got the aux mode set up. Let's go to the flight modes. I'm going to add range, and if I flip that switch, it'll just pick up that that's aux one and fill that in automatically. I'm going to put the switch in the armed position, which for me is pushed away. The little yellow tick mark will show the current channel position. I'm going to drag this yellow area to cover that. And then I'm going to hit save. Okay. Now our arming is set up. I want angle mode. That's going to be this switch. Aux 3. I like to have angle mode in the center. Uh, and I like to have beeper be on the momentary. Pull the momentary towards me and move this to cover the little yellow tick mark. And turtle mode. Where's flip crash? Flip crash. Flip crash. Where's flip crash? Where's flip crash? Are we not using D-Shot? We haven't got D-Shot turned on, so we can't assign flip crash. So I'll run to the configuration tab. Yeah. So I'm going to go for your D-Shot. This is an F4. Let's do D-Shot 300, 4K, 4K for an F4 processor. D-Shot 300 and 4K, 4K is safe. Uh, anything else I should change here? Max arm angle. I'm going to set that to 180. That allows the quadcopter to arm even when it's tilted. Um, it disables a safety precaution where you could accidentally arm it, but it can be so frustrating when you're like on a hill and the quadcopter won't freaking take off. I'm going to set that to 180. We should really give him a pre-arm mode so that he doesn't... Yeah, we got a spare aux channel. Let's do a pre-arm mode too. How can we do that with the buzzer? That's easy. Okay, we'll do that in a second. Um, <clears throat> okay, D shot, fine, all fine. I like to turn on air mode. Nothing else here matters. RX set, we have a buzzer, so we don't need to 
uh, RX set will let the motors beep when uh, if you didn't have a buzzer, the motors would beep. But I think we have a buzzer, so we're good. All right, save that. Yeah, we have a buzzer. You can hear the buzzer. Go back to the modes tab. Now that we have enabled D shot, we should be able to have access to flip crash or turtle mode. And we'll flip that. It's aux three. And the downward position is going to be turtle mode. Choop. And and we're also going to add a prearm. And we're going to set the prearm to be the buzzer. So prearm is going to be in the buzzer hold position. And and here's what that's going to let us do. Um, in order to arm the quad, you will need to pull the pre-arm switch, then the quad will arm. If you don't pull the pre-arm switch, the quad will refuse to arm, and that adds a little bit of safety. That's actually really clever. I never thought of just putting it on the buzzer switch before. It was pretty slick. Now, what I do with my quads is I just raise the throttle, and that prevents it from arming, but for it, like a total noob, maybe a pre-arm switch is a good idea. I don't know. I go back and forth. All right, so our flight modes are set up. Fantastic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click hide unused modes, and we'll just double check arm, angle mode, flip crash mode, good, beeper, and pre-arm. Yep. Perfect. Our switches are working like we need them to. Now let's go back to the receiver tab and let's take care of our endpoints and our centers. Alrighty. So now we're going to fix the endpoints and the centers. I've showed this a bunch of times in, in a bunch of different tutorials. Um, in a long press model, we're going to page to the output screen and I guess we'll check fix the centers first. The easiest way to fix the centers is to use the trims. No, we are not fixing it using the trims. That is not how you do it. The channel mapping isn't correct either. Yeah. Oh. We're going to get the channels to 1500. Trim center. 1500. And then we're going to scroll up and at the very bottom of the screen, trims to sub trims. And that will copy those trims over to the sub trims. The trims are now centered, and the sub trims hold that information. Um, I don't know why the centers for this one were 1520. That's a common thing that happens on spectrum receivers. I've never seen it on a fly sky, but I don't usually use fly sky in S bus mode either. So, and then we're going to adjust the endpoints, and we're going to do that. Uh, let's get the channel mapping correct first. So, throttle is correct, but yaw is moving roll, and roll is moving yaw. So. We'll change from A E T R. We'll just swap the R and the A R E T A, and that will fix that. And now yaw is yaw, perfect. And then we will adjust the endpoint. So for yaw, this is yaw, okay. Ten eighteen. We'll just adjust that endpoint while holding the stick until we hit a thousand. There we go. 103.7. That's my favorite radio station. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Probably going to go to 103.7 on the other end, too. Whoa, it's like the whole thing is displaced by 20 microseconds. It's like the whole thing is shifted to the left 20 microseconds. Now, I'm just going to um, really quickly wager that all the other channels probably need the same endpoints. So I'm just going to real quick dial in 103.7 and 96.0. Yaw, 1,000, 2,000. Throttle, 1,000, 2,000. Pitch, 1,000, 2,000. 1,000, 2,000 on roll. So now our channel mapping and our endpoints are correct. Yay. Real quick, adjust the stick low threshold so we don't have any dead band at the bottom and top of the throttle. There's no dead band at the top of the throttle anyway, but... We'll adjust that. Okay, perfect. Now our channels are good and correct. Well, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. Perfect. All right. Now we have our channel set up. We have our aux mode set up. We pretty much could go fly the quad at this point. Is there anything else we need to do? We don't have smart audio set up. We probably want that. Let's see. 
configuration tab. Uh, I guess we got to do the, the video transmitter next. So we're in Betaflight 357, so there is no video transmitter tab. It does make our life simpler because we don't have to deal with video transmitter or anything. But at the, uh, but at the same time, the video, once you know how to set up VTX tables, the video transmitter tab is actually really nice for troubleshooting. I kind of like I've come come to like it. And we'll just go mid-throttle yaw right to go into the OSD. And we will go features. VTX Smart Audio. Smart Audio is not working. That's not surprising. I have disabled it from the ports tab. I don't know why I would have thought it would be working. Uh, I don't remember which UART it was on, so we're just going to pick one and see if it suddenly starts working. It's still not working. If you go to the Smart Audio menu and you just see dashes at the top of the screen and no nothing else, then it's not working. So let's try the other one. So I see in the manual UART 3 should be IRC Tramp. Fine. When in doubt, look at the manual. What a concept. So instead of VTX SA, which is smart audio, we'll go to VTX TR. And what you need to see is at the top of the screen, it reads star F1 57 40 25. If you see dashes at the top of the screen, it means that it's not talking to the video transmitter. This means we are talking to the video transmitter, so smart audio is working. That's fantastic. Fat Shark Channel 1, that's fine, whatever, power. So you see how at the top of the screen it says F1 200. If I try to set it to 400, which I don't think the video transmitter supports, I don't believe that. It doesn't, I don't think that's right. I don't think it goes to, I don't, maybe it does. Maybe it does. 500 milliwatts. So is 600 milliwatts actually 500? This is why VTX tables are actually a good thing, because they let you actually have the right power levels, and you know. So I'm going to leave it on 600, I guess, and 600 is presumably actually 500. I don't know, but there you go. All right. Now, I think it should arm. I think we should be able to arm it and check it out. Uh, let's go to the motors tab. I understand the risk. Props are off. They are. Let's just double check that the motors spin. They do. And let's try to arm. And remember, we got pre arm, so we got to hold this and. No. All right. Why isn't it arming? Uh, go to setup tab. No pre arm. CMS menu. OSD menu. Oh, I see. We got to get out of the OSD and we got to get out of the. <laughs> okay. I guess a good point. Back. Back. Save and exit. Okay. No pre arm is the only. Okay. Here we go. There we go. I think we got a flying quadcopter. <sighs> what else What else might I need to do? I mean, there's performance-oriented tweaks we could go with, but I think we're basically ready to send this back to this guy. What about the OSD? Maybe I'll just give this guy my OSD setup. Oh, RSSI isn't working. We haven't got RSSI set up. I'm not sure that this uh, flight controller, this receiver supports RSSI, so let's go to the OSD. Let's not confuse the poor guy by having RSSI show up and not actually be there and everything else seems fine most people probably don't want throttle position that's good we'll turn off craft name also great save <laughs> and we'll go into the font manager and we'll select a custom image and we'll put my we'll put my logo on a splash screen <laughs> i don't think i mind yes all right. Well, there you go, guys. We have, I mean, I got to button the quad up, but we have basically a working quadcopter. I'm going to hover test it before I put it back in the box and send it back to him. But I think we're basically done at this point. Thank you guys for coming along. If this uh, was interesting to you, I, but it went a little too fast, I have much more detailed tutorials. I have a whole like 15 video series where I go through all this stuff a lot slower and a lot more detail. I'll put a link in the video description. And I just have tons of videos all over my channel on all kinds of topics like this, but um, hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Happy flying.